everyone, this is Cynthia Thinnis and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to talk about the great conjunction that will be coming on the solstice of this year. A great conjunction is a conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. And I have been talking about this coming great conjunction quite a bit on my astrological blog. Um, and how the events of 2020 that we've been experienced are leading up to and preparing us for this great conjunction. I think many people have the sense that there is a big change coming up. Uh, some people think it's going to become a utopia. Some people think it's going to become a dystopia. Um, there's also the sense that this conjunction is somehow marking the age of Aquarius because, in part because it's going to be occurring in the sign of Aquarius. In the traditional sense of time, in a broad sense, we are moving from the end of what is known as the Iron Age or the Kali Yuga into a new golden age. I discussed this in an earlier video. When this change happens, it usually is some sort of a cataclysm in which the old is completely swept away and something new is reborn. I don't know when this is going to be. All religious traditions are vague on when this is going to happen, and there's very good reasons for that. We need to live our lives as our lives and not necessarily worry about when the final destruction of our era is going to be. So, for the purpose of this, I'm assuming that this change is not happening now and that life as we know it is going to go on. So let us look at this great conjunction. To begin with, what are great conjunctions? As I discussed uh, earlier, these conjunctions are when Jupiter and Saturn are together in the sky. And this happens once about every 20 years. And this is the traditional marker for generations. In modern times, some astrologers view generations as being marked by the outer planets, particularly Pluto, but traditionally for millennia, it's been the Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions that have marked each new generation. There's a particular feature of Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions in that they occur in the same element for roughly 180 to 200 years. And they go through all the elements once every 800 years. So not only do these conjunctions mark a short-term generation within someone's lifetime, they also mark wider cycles of time. And they go through the elements in the same order that you see them in the zodiac. They start with fire, go to earth, then air, then water, and then back to fire. Last week, I discussed the polarity between wet and dry. And this has particular relevance to the cycle of the Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions. They start off going through the dry signs, going through fire and earth. And then they move to the wet signs, which are air and water. During the fire and earth signs is when empires build up, when structures build up, when things are new and consolidate. The wet times, which are air and water, are when structures start to break down and decline. And these are times in which there's greater globalization, there is greater unity across cultures and across the world. And these usually end up, particularly through uh, the water periods, 
in some sort of destructions in the dominant uh, power or religion of the time. After the water periods, there is a new fire period, which begins a new cycle. Right now, we are in the change from earth to air. We have been through about 400 years of building and consolidation of natures and structures and power structures. And now we're moving into a period of blending of cultures and decline of the major powers. In the last two air periods, we have dealt with uh, the bubonic plague. But the good news, for us at least, is, is that that didn't happen until the end of the air period. And it was a feature of the transition from the air to the water period. So uh, the fact that we're dealing with COVID now, it's probably not a situation like the bubonic plague. So that's the good news. On the other hand, air is characterized by spread of many things and diseases are one of the things that can spread during an air period. So when we're looking at what the future is going to hold, one of the best ways to get a clue is to see what's happened during the same cycles during the past. In that vein, I'm going to look at the last two cycles that we've had from fire all the way through water. And then I'll look at the current cycle and where we're at, which is about halfway through. In looking at the historical pattern, one of the important things to know is, is that the shift between elements is not necessarily always clean. Uh, sometimes uh, it, the conjunctions dip their toe into another element and then go back to the previous one before they move forward and stay in the new element. So with that in mind, let's look at the historical record. About 2000 years ago was a shift between water and fire. This is the beginning of the cycle. Now this shift happened over uh, several conjunctions. The first conjunction in fire was in 26 BCE. And then there were some periods of water alternated by fire. And then it went into fire to stay in <clears throat> 74 of the common era. During this time in the West was the shift between the Roman Republic to the Roman Empire. And it also marked the start of Christianity and the uh, development of uh, the early apostles and the writings of the uh, Christian, of early Christianity. Um, it also marked, the end of this also marked the fall of the Jerusalem temple. The conjunctions then moved to earth, starting about 154 of the common era. This particular period shifted between earth and fire for a while. It did not completely move into earth until 253 of the common era. And this is when the Roman Empire were built, was building and was also as Christianity was growing and developing and interacting with the Roman Empire, usually in a negative way. The next air period started in 332 of the Common Era. And this is about the time when Christianity was starting to become the official religion of the Roman Empire. There were a few uh, earth uh, periods in between that, and it finally went into air for good in 452 of the Common Era. And this marks the time when the Western Roman Empire started to fall. 
Um, this fall began, this fall took a while, uh, but it was complete by the first great conjunction in water, which was in 571 of the Common Era. And there were a few air, air conjunctions in between, uh, and it was completely in water by 690 of the Common Era. This was, this marked what is known in the West as the Dark Age. Some people consider the whole Middle Ages as the Dark Ages, but really this is when the records fell. This also marked the beginning of Islam. The next fire period began around 769 of the Common Era, although there were some smatterings of water, great conjunctions in between. These conjunctions were fully in fire starting 868 of the Common Era, and this is the time of the development of the Holy Roman Empire, and it was also when structures started to build up in Western Europe uh, in terms of uh, a renewal of writings, a renewal of civilization. And this fire period lasted uh, until about the 11th century. And the earth period marked the high middle ages. And it also started to mark uh, the beginning of the crusades. The next air period marked at the very beginning of it, which was at the end of the 12th century and the beginning of the 13th century, it started with the Mongol invasion. The Mongols had the biggest contiguous land empire in history, and they took over such places as China, and they threatened Western Europe. The other thing that they did is, is that they unified a lot of cultures that had not been unified. They took over the old Silk Road and they, their invasion broke down old structures, but it developed a forced globalization. And at the end of this air period, was the Black Death, which wiped out a lot of the population in Europe. And this was between the, um, right at the end of the air period, moving into the water period. The next water period marked the, the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation. This is when um, the Catholic Church, which had been in power uh, for several centuries, for many centuries, started to lose their power and influence. In England, this is the time of the War of the Roses. Uh, this was also the time of the Tudors. And this led to the next fire period. The transition was a long transition uh, between 1544 to 1663. Um, by the end of this, this period began the uh, Stuarts in England, and this also marked the beginning of the colonial period, where uh, particularly through the Americas, when there was European colonization of the Americas. And during the fire period, at the end of this fire period, was the birth of the United States as an independent nation. The next earth period was the middle of the 19th century, and this marked the Civil War uh, and the Reconstruction and the rise of the United States as a world power. And now we are moving from the earth to the air period. We did have a brief foray into 
air between 1980 and 2000. And one of the interesting things that happened during that time is that technology, the technology that we're using today was born. The internet uh, became popular during this time and accessible to the average person. Now, it's interesting that after that, the Great Conjunctions moved back to Earth uh, in the year 2000. And a lot of the technology that we're using today is based on what came from 1980 to 2000. A lot of the stuff we have isn't necessarily new, but a development and a a refinement of what had already been developed in between 1980 and 2000. Um, this was also on the disease side, this was also when uh, we were dealing with AIDS. So let's talk about the last year in this light. This last year has been dominated by COVID-19 and it has had two interesting effects. Uh, one of them is that it's caused an extreme separation between people on a physical level. On the other hand, through technology, there's been a greater connection on a global level. Because of Zoom, people who live across the ocean from each other are in the same boat as people who live just across town in terms of how they can connect and how they can get together. It's very likely that this trend will continue. There has been a, uh, on a physical level, there's been an extreme separation. However, it's forced people to interact in ways that cannot be bound by national boundaries and national governments. Unfortunately, air is also characterized by disease and pandemics, but in the historical record, the big ones have occurred at the end of air, not at the beginning. So uh, we're probably going to get past this current pandemic. Social boundaries blend during air periods, and there is globalization, which we're seeing. Uh, this globalization is probably going to happen through technology, and perhaps uh, corporations are going to take the place of governments. And unfortunately, it's not necessarily good news for those countries that are currently in power. Now that we have seen the cycle of the Great Conjunctions through the elements, let us look at this particular Great Conjunction that will be happening on December 21st, 2020. I've cast this chart for Chicago, Illinois, um, but of course it will be different depending on where it's located. And so ignore the houses and we're just gonna look at the planets. One feature of this chart is, is that the moon is at the end of Pisces, and it's technically what's considered void of course, which means it will not be making another aspect until it moves into a new sign. In astrology, the key words for void of course is nothing will come of it. Now, there's a few features of this chart and this particular void, of course, moon that, at least according to some authors, will nullify the uh, void, of course. One of which is that the moon is already within orb or within the allowable margin of error of an aspect with several of other planets. It is within about two degrees of an aspect with both the Sun and Mercury and with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction itself. 
it will be making a square with the sun and mercury in capricorn and it will be forming a sextile which is a nice aspect with the jupiter saturn conjunction um, also this is occurring in pisces and according to some authors including william Lilly, the the moon can be effective even when void of course when in pisces An interesting feature of this chart is the uh, two planets in Capricorn and then the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius. One of the reasons it's been inter that's interesting is, is that Saturn and Aquarius have been featured this year. Uh, this has been, uh, it was heavily Capricorn at the very beginning of the year. Uh, Saturn took a brief foray into Aquarius between about April and June this year and then went back to Capricorn. Capricorn and Aquarius are both traditionally ruled by Saturn and Saturn is boundaries, it's structures. Capricorn and Aquarius both deal with structures but they have a different relationship with them. Capricorn Saturn build structures up. This is conservative. It's very uh, rules based and very serious. Um, Aquarius tends to break down structures and break down barriers. It tends to be outside of the established structure. So we're dealing with a move from Capricorn to Aquarius. And the conjunction itself is happening at the zero degree of Aquarius. We're right on the boundary between Capricorn and Aquarius. But the moon, which is the fastest moving planet and the activator, is in a harsh relationship, a square with Capricorn planets but in a pleasant aspect with the Aquarius planets. This further indicates that the, the direction that we're heading in is towards breaking down established structures and breaking down boundaries. We are headed towards globalization. We're headed towards uh, unifications of people across the world and away from strict national boundaries and strict divisions between people. The other feature in this chart that's notable is, is that there's a tight square between Mars and Pluto. And this might be a little worrying. Uh, Pluto uh, is known as a very destructive planet this year, particularly in the United States, Pluto aspects have coincided with spikes in COVID cases. But even though this is worrying, it is my belief and my contention that Pluto is really optional. We don't have to experience Pluto if we don't engage with Pluto. Pluto is about free will, it's not about fate. One of the features of the U.S., and I believe why the U.S. has so closely followed uh, Pluto in terms of COVID cases, is that the U.S. has taken a particular fondness towards Pluto um, and has resisted its demotion to a dwarf planet by astronomers. Um, all the outer planets, including Pluto, are effective when societies break down and when people function as individuals, uh, including selfishness and not, and not being willing to come together as a community and seeing themselves as part of a community. And this has functioned in the United States with people not wanting to follow guidelines, not wanting to work together uh, to contain the virus. Um, the outer planets and individualism go hand in hand. 
And even though Pluto is a choice, collective choice will impact everybody. So even if you as an individual are trying to avoid Pluto, if the collective is focused on Pluto, it might impact at least on a, a worldwide level or country level or community level. But even so, you can choose to minimize the effect of Pluto on yourself by not engaging with it and avoiding the things that it represents. Uh, in particular, with Pluto, the idea is to stay calm and hold on to your values. Don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that what's good is bad and what's bad is good. Uh, holding on to your innocence and your sense of goodness is a good way to avoid experiencing Pluto, at least on an individual level. So in summary, big changes are coming, but it's probably not going to be the end of the world as we know it. We're looking at increased globalization. We're looking at technology, which is going to change the way we live and the way we function in the world. The current powers may be in trouble. Um, this is uh, the move from earth to air. It usually involves a decline in the power of whoever is currently holding uh, the reins. But also the boundaries between cultures and countries is going to fade. Uh, there will be a much more interaction and we're going to see ourselves as a world rather than separate nations and separate countries. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to talk about anything I said, please uh, write in the comment section. Uh, if you like this video, please press like. Uh, that helps my channel quite a bit. And if you would like to receive notifications of future videos, please subscribe and ring the bell. Goodbye for now. See you next week.